Now I buy um, brake fittings in bulk, I buy them from a company called Beals, who are pretty good. So, but one thing to, it's easy to happen is that the um, fittings get mixed up. So you can have different threads, different lengths or whatever. So what I've done, I always check that the brake fitting A goes inside the hose in this case, and B, again, I've got a little gap there. And that's important because that's got no flare on the end of it. So that means I still would have room to turn and, and get that fitting in there tightly mm. and to push the union up. Otherwise, you're gonna be in a situation where it's not gonna grip on that again and you can uh, have a leak. So what we've got here, you can just see that pipe's uh, sitting through. Make sure that the, both the dies are pushed back into the machine. And all I use is a piece of flat top. There, that's pushed it in flat. Pull the top clamp up. Select the correct uh, thing. So we're 4.75 in operation one or option one. Make sure it's seated in there properly. And that's nice and tight. And literally, all you do, operate the handle bit of pressure, springs back, there, brilliant flare, absolutely spot on. So you can see we've got a little die here, we're going to fit that loosely in there, I'm going to need two hands again, I've got to fit the other one on top and then put the clamp across and then we'll fit the pipe into where it needs to be. So while we're waiting for things to dry, we uh, uh, might as well build up the brakes because uh, it isn't gonna stop us all the rest. As you can see, uh, the stuff is now going quite black. So it's, I'm gonna give it another coat in a few minutes. So the next thing is these are the, um, for those of you who have not worked on them before. So the rear brakes on this car are single piston, uh, what we would call floating brakes. Uh, brake floating calipers. So these two pins fit on the back here. Let's put some light on it. As you can see they fit in here. Now sometimes you do get problems with these seizing. These these are pretty good. You can see they've got flats on. Don't don't grease them. Not unless you've got the correct grease which will be a, a carbon based grease. Um, and the idea is that the piston then floats up and down on these pins. So this is the product Hydrate 80 by Built Hamber for those who want to note the number down. And uh, it's, as I said, it's just like a, a, a pale grey paint. Um, some application instructions there as well, if people want them. Um, and the, one of the other products I use by them is uh, a detox gel, which is something, again, you can paint on, which helps to kill rust. I've used that a few times. And also you can get what fits are these detox gels, something called Detox C, which is here, which you can... Um, you can dissolve into water and it, it acts like a rust cleaner. Really good stuff, used it a few times on a few things. So I've done some cleaning up now and uh, cut some sealer back so you'll see that uh, I've now painted on a product uh, by Built Hamber, which I shall show you very shortly. Uh, it's a corrosion inhibitor. It's, uh, um, I've used it for a number of years now, probably over a decade, and it's been absolutely superb. So. We're waiting for the first coat to dry there. It will go a black colour, and then we'll just give it another coat again. And it's almost like a, a almost like a varnish that kills the rust and it seals things off. So then, what we will do, we'll apply some um, anti-stone chip to make it uh, look uh, and, 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 and feel right. We might even put some sealant round in certain places, but certainly want to protect it. And uh, then we'll we'll spray some under seal over at the top, uh, or possibly a bit of spray paint. Um, it's all covered up, so it's not particularly a big issue if it's not in the exact colour. Again, I cut some sealant back. Just look at that. And this isn't just unique to an Alfa Romeo. Um, you know, these techniques are exactly the same for corrosion protection as with BMW, Mercedes, you know, German stuff, Japanese stuff, whatever. It will, you know, the paint gets damaged, it'll creep up there. It's nearly 20 year old, that car. That, uh, give it another 10 years and that'll be a hole. So this is a classic example of, of where people say, you know, you, you miss things out. So this under here, the, this is underneath the brake bracket that holds the pipe. It's a sealer that's just, just, I've managed to get away and look at it. So we'll be cutting that sealer back again, cleaning it out, treating it, and that will be uh, secured for the future. All I'm using is just a bog standard Dremel, and I buy these wire brushes, uh, little orbital wire brushes. Um, off eBay again. They're not expensive. Buy a bag of 50 for about 10 or something like that. 
So as I said earlier, I've got uh, a few areas of corrosion that I need to uh, sort out a little bit. So just, just some small bits just to keep on top of it. So there's a little bit on the end of that flange there. The bracket that we have here where um, everything bolts onto. And there's a little bit just behind there. All it is is where the paint starts to flake all the undersillies. And there's also a little bit on the underside of the chassis leg. So I'm going to do all that uh, and clean it all up. It's worth getting on top of these things. Again, there's a little bit there need to do and also you can see there's a lot of sealant on there so we just clean that back and then we're going to treat it with some um, uh, some built hamber product because this is the area this this is what's really important when you've got splash shields off which is the guard that goes underneath it it's really important to get these things treated because they're, un they're out of sight you know it will just creep away there and next thing you know especially that bracket there next thing you know you go to undo something and it's all going to fall off and you're going to end up with a big hole so you know now is the time to do it you see we've got the pads in now uh, i'm now going to put the caliper on with the uh, the new bolts you can see this the new bolts are supplied with the pads and they've got stud lock on them literally they're pushed in the uh, grommets are uh, fitted nicely just make sure they're nice and free so here we are we're there now i'm not going to do it all tight at the minute because we need to do some cleaning up on the corrosion but then uh, we will treat it all with some spray wax and make sure that uh, we don't get any more corrosion. And just to prove to you it's worked, so I've put a bolt in there and that's nice and solid. As I said, what I'm probably going to do is put a stud in it and uh, then put a nut on top of it. We've had a few problems with this, so but we've drilled it out. And as you can see now, I have uh, uh, put one of those threaded inserts in there. That collar would normally be right the way up, but we've, as I said, we've had a few difficulties with this particular one because uh, uh, trying to drill it out was a bit of a problem and it's not particularly deep thread either so what I'm going to probably do on this because the way it mounts putting a bolt in there is actually going to be could be a bit of a pain so what I might actually do is put a stud on it and then a nut on the top so you don't have to disturb it anymore like the last thing I want to be doing is be drilling this uh, bottom arm repeatedly over the years and weakening it so one thing I can't emphasize enough is whilst we're doing all or doing jobs quite often you end up having to do something else and you have to wait for things to happen etc so we're waiting for this paint to uh, the corrosion inhibitor to, to dry as you see I've given it a second coat now and it looks really thick it's going black so it's, it's uh, and I put a little bit of heat on it as well so we've got the caliper on that's all uh, put some light further away that the wheel turns nicely don't worry about the disc moving about a bit because it's uh, not got the wheel on we can't do anything more there because I need to paint all behind where it mounts, obviously before it mounts on there, uh, get that treated. So one thing that did happen is that this um, this handbrake cable has a little mounting, you can see there, which bolts into that aspect there. Now, as you see, the bolts are snapped off, not surprising, steering to aluminium. That ain't gonna drill out. We're gonna try it, but uh, I've got some left-hand drill bits. It might move. But the likelihood is that we're going to have to helicoil it. Now, for those who don't know what helicoil is, it's a thread repair system. So you sometimes have a situation where uh, a thread gets damaged or, you know, um, something gets seized and you have to drill it out. And what this effectively does is puts a wire insert. As we look at something that's a bit bigger here with an M10. Puts a wire, you drill the hole out bigger. You tap it out to the same pitch with the, the taps that are su supplied, and then you put this wire insert in, and effectively it adds, it acts as a thread repair. So I'm using a slightly different type of system. It's a little bit like um, some of the uh, systems you get from Gunston, apart from it's got a hand pump. So what you're supposed to do first is to pressurise the system. So we've got a bit of fluid in the reservoir, and as you can see, we're up to 10 bar there. And we did have a problem on the front caliper. These are Brembo calipers. The bleed nipples that I had um, were not right. The taper was, was too sloped and it wouldn't seal off on this side. So we've had a bit of a pull, but it's better to find it out now than later. Everything else is fine. Looking at the, uh, the repair that we've done the pipe there, that's fine. There's, there's no fluid dripping, it's holding pressure. So we're now going on to do the bleeding. So for all the work we were doing earlier, we've now we're got all the under seal up in place. We've got the brake fitting back on, as you can see. Um, I had to mess around with the pipe a bit, but we can soon tidy that up. And what we've also done 
is um, pressurise the brake system. So, uh, and that's to show you what we've been up to now. That's had uh, three good coats on there. You can see I've got a bracket back in as well whilst I'm at it. Let's just wait for that to dry up a bit. I'm just going to squirt some under seal on top of that then. And that can all go back together. So there, I've applied um, uh, another coat, or oh, just one coat of Gravitex on top. You can see it's already started to stick. You don't, don't worry about the thickness. It will thicken up, plus we're going to spray something on top of it anyway.